Greetings fellow Conquerors, and welcome back to Great Britain here in EU4, where we're just having a great time doing all of the sort of things that, you know, the British Empire does. You know, colonizing things, winning wars, and just generally having a good time. Now I looked around, and uh, we are actually, let's see if I look here, uh, four years out from our truce with the Swedish being over, uh, so that could be an easy avenue of expansion for us, considering that they still, to this day, have no allies. So that would be something we're looking into here. Just had a lovely breakfast. Uh, had some uh, um, frosted mini wheats. They're called. It's an American cereal. Basically, these giant, uh, you know, for cereal anyway, bundles. They're not miniature at all. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, that are just like they have like this layer of like frosting on top. They're pretty. It's pretty good. It's pretty good stuff. And. Uh, the beauty of having this colony here, by the way, uh, in Beifada, is we can fabricate claims on Mali and basically just start fabricating and, and you know, killing them. Which is all pretty good. And, uh, alright, we have a loan. We do have a loan. A loan. It's not that bad. Uh, we get an event. Let's see. Increase centralization. Oh, we get this nonsense again. Don't, aren't we already missing one Diplo rep from... Oh no, that event wore off. Uh, sure, let's raise our Republican tradition again. Cromwell is still only, uh, 30 years old, so he's got a long reign ahead of him. Oh, the Netherlands have the first circumnavigation. Well, good for them. Who are you allied with? Uh, Thuringia and Nassau. Alright. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we are in a place where we can start uh, annexing uh, Lorraine. And in fact, we already are, aren't we? Yes, okay. I wondered about that. I, I saw that the opinion was high enough and I was like, uh, didn't we start doing that in the last episode? And the answer is yes. Yes, we did. Now, for our next administrative idea group, we're likely going to take um, exploration ideas. Or not, ex sorry, expansion ideas. Expansion, exploration, two sides of the same coin, really. And look at that, look at that Spanish Brazil. They have 44.6% uh, liberty desire. <clears throat> you know, with one uh, supporter, they could easily get an independence war there. Not that I care about the fate of some colonial nation, but... Oof. Look at all this Dutch land here. They're swallowing up. They're swallowing it up. Do they have a... They only have exploration, and yet they're managing to do that. So, good for them. <clears throat> now, of course, we want to we wanna make our own claim here. Now, I'm sorry for coughing so much. I'm getting a just a little bit of something uh, caught in my throat, I guess. Now, as as an exploration, you know, idea idea group, if we finish the uh, idea group um, with our next, uh, you know, amount of diplo points that we get, which we're probably gonna want to pick up uh, tech seventeen fairly, you know, within the foreseeable future. Um, we if we pick up the last exploration idea, we get a permanent casus belli against primitives uh, to basically annex them into our colonies, and that's something I'm interested in for sure. Now, for the time being, we're going to leave Oil Bucketland, and we're going to start uh, colonizing some of these other lands here. Now, uh, we might as well group up these uh, these infantry as well, and let time pass. I don't think I think it's been like four minutes, and I still haven't even like started the clock yet. And let's go to this province. Hey, look, it's the Micmac. How you doing, Micmac? Now, one of the most frustrating things about playing a North American nation is 
Um, you lack the ability to fabricate claims, so any wars you declare have to be no CB wars. Which um, isn't as bad as you might think because you can always just... Oh. Uh, gain 0.5 corruption, whatever. Um, oh, we lost one of our generals. Which one was he? He was not the 4-4, so I'm not particularly worried. Now, let's see here. What was I saying about this? I totally forget. Oh, sorry, North American Nations, right. So, North American Nations, um, you have to declare no CB wars, which isn't as bad as you might think because um, you have so many points just sitting around, basically from a... Uh, because it takes so long to tech up. Um, and the thing about it is, when Westerners show up, you just basically get to mostly westernize for free. As long as you meet all the uh, the tribal institutions, they're called. Yeah, like, there's actually, with, uh, and, th and this is all with the Conquest of Paradise DLC, by the way. If you don't have Conquest of Paradise, there's basically nothing you can do, um, as these nations, because you're, you're tribal, and you have no way of, um, changing your government, unless you're, uh, you know, unless you have Conquest of Paradise. Hey, Grand Army, cool. Minus 10% uh, maintenance costs. I'm all about that. Lubick here doing a uh, bang-up job, taking out the, uh, the Swedes. Austria is winning his war against the Savoyards. The loss of his one ally is interesting, I will say. Let's see, let's fabricate a claim here on Gabu. I actually kind of wish we had a uh, another diplomat because we're a little bit uh, tied up at the moment. All right, the Tuscans are actually winning some battles. I'm quite impressed. Uh, all they have is uh, quantity ideas, which you know does more than you might think. And meanwhile, Spain is fighting. Um, a war against the Palatinate, which Bohemia, uh, the instigator, is losing. Tuscany has canceled military access. That's fine. All right, let's fabricate a claim here on Helsingland. I'm a little bit tired. I was up really late doing a uh, doing a multiplayer campaign. I also uh, was making. I made my uh, Trebizon video um, last night. So if you haven't seen that, uh, I just do a quick recap on uh, my experience playing Tremazond, the uh, little nation that starts out next to the Ottomans. Let's see, any, uh, any rebels incoming? Doesn't look like it. That's good. Ooh, supporter for Oliver Cromwell in the military. While many within the military still retain some loyalty to the previous administration, the president does enjoy some very ardent supporters. Some army leaders value the, the absolute power Oliver Cromwell wields and the need for a leader with authority in these turbulent times. Promoting even a talented individual for obvious political reasons may not be well received, but we need our generals to be both skilled and loyal. Should we seize this opportunity or nobly keep our distance? So we, gain, we can gain a general with 100 tradition, which with offensive ideas means he's going to have crazy stats, uh, or gain 10 Republican tradition, which would lower our stability cost and uh, lower national unrest. I think we take the general, because it's fun. And he's a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, <laughs> he's a 6-6-3. Six, six, I like it. What's his name? This is William Beresford. Well, welcome aboard, William. And our truce with the Swedes, ending in 1633. Uh, Spain becoming an increasingly weak option for both an ally and a rival. And noting that the Ottomans aren't even an option, so... I don't know if that's based on, you know, distance, or if we've just completely eclipsed them, but... We are two techs higher than they are. Um, we don't have a royal marriage with the Spanish. And that's worth noting, I think. 
Oh, right, because we can't uh, get royal marriages because we're a republic now. Right, right. <laughs> the things we forget. Now, our difficult points are a little bit low right now because we are annexing uh, Lorraine. Uh, which is going to be how much development? Another, uh, Basically another 75, so I'm really pleased with the amount of growth we're getting here. Right, Ostergutland has been uh, converted. I would really love to convert this Center of Reformation, but I don't know if we have the missionary strength to do it. Let's see. Um, there was a war fought here recently. Micmac is part of a truce. But uh, we'll be conquer this. Uh, we'll be conquering this land in short order. Make no mistake about that. Ah, lose 2,600 sailors. The horror. Please, God, no, not the sailors. Anything but that. Who are you fighting, Portugal? Oh, these poor guys. Yep, Rio de Prata. Sure. Looks like uh, Spain's trying to get their own uh, hand in South America as well. Makes you wonder how much money they're actually making from it. Now, I'm looking at it, and another great avenue for expansion looks like it may be the Papal State, actually. Um, so we'll be looking into expanding into them as well. For the, time, for the time being, we are just kind of waiting for things to happen. Um, I think I should kick the game speed up, because we have just kind of been sitting around. Uh, Bengal has Civil War. Um, tiny Bengal. Adorable Bengal. Uh, man, Jean Poor. I'm not sure why, but Jean Poor always seems to be, like, really good on military tech. You know, they're almost the same level uh, we are. Which is pretty crazy, considering that they have a 50% uh, higher... Um, cost to it, and they still have 21 ideas, only 6 less than our own. Uh, as we can see here, Swedish peasants have uh, risen up. They may actually come try to attack us. We are just basically waiting for another claim on the uh, Swedish. Uh, Lubick pieced out and didn't take any land. Really? Right then. Well. Uh, request for military access from Bremen. Sure. It's incredible that he didn't take any land. I'm a little bit shocked. Well, obviously we're going to try to take this, uh... We're going to try to take, uh... I think it's Skane. It's either that or Skune. Probably Skane. I would have to warrant to guess. Let's see, we've renewed the loan. Alright, cool, we can fabricate our claim. On Skane. Yeah, and you know, we're getting closer and closer to actually accepting Swedish as a uh, religion here. Or as a... <laughs> the religion of Swedish. Alright, let's, uh, let's go to war. Um, actually, no, our truce is not up yet. It's over this year in November, so we'll bear that in mind. Uh, and we will fabricate another claim on Mali because uh, we're going to go attack them, basically, um, after this. So. I'm loving all these ivory provinces as well. How's this colony coming along? Eh, it's doing well enough. Alright, truce with Sweden has expired, um, which means we are going to go ahead and declare war. Uh, the Netherlands would join us, but I don't really see the point, because um, Sweden at this point basically doesn't even have an army. So we're going to claim Skane. Start seizing this land down. Britain gets colonial enthusiasm. Hooray! Yeah, settler chance and uh, yeah, settler chance and settler increase for 
Six years, what a weird timer. Uh, but hey, that's okay. Establish trade in India. Do we get claims for doing this? No. It's just a mission. Okay, well whatever. Never mind. I don't want that mission. <laughs> We're gonna kill Sweden's rebels for him because I want this province. Making we lost two thousand to kill twenty four thousand because we have a six six general. You know, just Britain things. Man, the supply limit in most of these provinces is just absolute garbage. Not even sure really what to siege anymore. Uh oh. Well, we caught the uh, the Swedish army. Oh. Uh, well, we got a stack wipe and only lost 3,000 troops. So, rip Sweden. Basically. And we're going to start taking uh, the rest of this land, I guess. Um, I don't think the supply limit is high enough here. You know, you would think since it's an island that it would. Um, actually, it can support us. That's fine. Um. Let's, uh, let's detach for siege up here. Right. Uh, detach siege. That way we're not taking ridiculous amounts of, uh, attrition. Let's get, uh, base tax in Plymouth, because when we get our second colony up and running... We'll uh, want that base tax for them so that they can actually afford to do things. Uh, 500 ducats thanks to smugglers. Cool. I love that event. Really love it. Oh, we'll just sink the uh, Swedish fleet. Because why not? And uh, we'll send the fleet around to go blockade uh, this province so that they can actually besiege it effectively. And once again, we have uh, attacking rebels in Calais. Really happy we picked up plutocratic ideas. This morale um, appears to be doing us a huge amount of work. Um, I hate spending the Diplo, but I really want to stop these constant rebellions. And somebody, you know, mentioned and thank you for doing this. Uh, that you can, if you change the culture, that they stop uh, rising up. So we're gonna do exactly that. This is ours. <laughs> And yeah, Sweden is basically rip at this point. Alright, what missions do we got? We got protect against Poland and conquer Luxembourg. Let's protect against Poland. Man, Poland is big. But their diplotech is 14. <laughs> Watch out, everyone. I think they're still Eastern, aren't they? Oh, they westernized. Interesting. Uh, they didn't do it by taking Prague, that's for sure. So they must have just manually westernized. What a waste. Alright, our province down here has become self-sustaining. Uh, which means we're going to start uh, expanding the colonies over here. Let's see. And we could advance our tech, or we could, uh... We could also build another manufactory, which seems like a good idea, uh, depending on the province, if we can find one that has a high production value. Oh, hey, there we go, yeah. 0.65 in Glamorganshire. Absolutely, build a factory there.
Now, I think it speaks volumes that um, we're making so much money that we're still making 14 ducats even while reinforcing. I probably will expand the army fairly soon here. Alright, won the Siege of Viborg. We'll just keep sieging things down. We've gained trade dispute against Poland. Alright, now how much do we actually want to take from Sweden here? We want to take our two claims. Might cause Austria to join a coalition. Don't really care. They don't have uh, the gall to do it anymore. Um, I think these four provinces is fine. 20 aggressive expansion is perfectly fine. Uh, for 125 admin. We could obviously take more. But, you know, how much of this land is really worth it? I guess this uh, province here, Trondelag, is, is 10, which is pretty nice. I mean, I mean, there's some good provinces here, for sure. Uh, we just don't have them uh, occupied or besieged or anything like that. Do we even want these two provinces? I guess they are decently developed. Yeah, I think that's all. I think we'll take a moderately uh, good peace deal here. Rather than just completely wrecking them. Take all their money, of course. Uh, get 11 prestige. And uh, we can't force our religion because they're too big. Um, we could have them release a nation. We could have them release Finland. But that's just mean. And a waste of Diplo points. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do this peace deal. I'm okay with this. Don't really see um, how the rest of this, you know, benefits us. We could make them revoke their cores on our land, but... I mean, we might as well, right? So we'll get more prestige out of it. It will increase the truce timer, of course, but... All right, we're gonna send the uh, the six, uh, you know, our, our six six leader into uh, on an African expedition. We're gonna go have some fun. Get the fleet ready. All right, regrettably, we have lost conquest against uh, Sweden because we pressed all of our claims. Naturally, <laughs> let's see. Spy network construction plus 20% and lose 10 prestige or Molly's opinion goes down by negative 70. Um, okay. Don't really care about Molly's opinion, so not really a problem. Uh, we could pick up military tech 19. It's either that or national unrest minus 2. Um, national unrest minus 2 is really tempting, that's for sure. But I think we go with the next military tech, just to get those that tactics advantage, supply limit, and better infantry as well. And I think we go with Gustavian infantry uh, for the just for the offensive fire. And the fact that our morale damage is not that high compared to uh, nations who rely solely on morale. Now, I doubt that the supply limit is good in this province. Uh, it's 42, actually, um, because of tech. So, you know, thank God for technology. Alright, we've converted Vastergotland. And we can't convert any of these other provinces yet because um, we don't have enough... Uh, words are hard sometimes. <laughs> Tolerance for all. God is good. Tolerance of heathens and heretics plus two. Very nice. Alright, just waiting for the fleet to arrive. Hum dum dum. Alright, we have Annex Lorraine. We are protecting against Poland. Uh, turn Rhode Island into a city. Where is Rhode Island? Oh, we're already colonizing it. Okay. Uh, what do we get out of it? Uh, gain one base production, and local development goes down. That's okay. 
Uh, establish trade in the Americas. Gain 40 ducats and 40 diplo power. Or protect our brethren in Hanegao. I think we try to establish trade in the Americas. Let's see. Where is, where is the Chesapeake node? Um, unfortunately, it looks like the Dutch are getting fairly close to a, uh, you know, a, a trade node, which is unfortunate to say the least. Um, but we will attempt to do this mission. We will attempt it. And we can do this by picking up um, Manhattan here, as well as uh, getting Massachusetts from the uh, Micmac. So we'll be planning on that. And uh, our army has arrived here in uh, here in Africa. So uh, in the next episode, we're going to be looking to do some more uh, conquest, uh, this time in Central Africa. So thank you for joining me, my fellow Britishmen, and I'll see you on the next one.